super cute. Hi, everybody. I'm here with Marky Culver, who who is going, oh, what is Mish doing? My <laughs> word. Why did I say yes to this? So we're live on Facebook, and everybody starts getting notifications. Like, Mish, Mish is live right oh, now. Gosh. And then people will start showing up, and and they'll say hi to us, and they'll, they'll like, do little hearts and thumbs up and say that we're, you know, just like, hi, we're here watching you guys. <laughs> Cool. Kind of fun, right? Yeah. That no, is no. neat. I didn't know you could do that. Are we good? Is that yeah. is that is that is that good for you? That's good for me. <laughs> um so I'm gonna double check safe right, real quick. Oh this thanks. is just like everything in here. And oh good. If you wanted to so a lot of people ask like how they can get involved or be engaged and this is how. It's called Stop a it. bake bread together. I wasn't talking, I was trying to tell you. <laughs> Oh, cool. All right. Very so cool. So you can, we provide you some recipes and you can try out the recipes and then you can invite people over and share the bread with them and then also share our story. I love oh. it. Yeah. yeah. It's a nicer way than being like, just give us money. Thanks. Sure. Here, give us money. No, here's some, and look at, I have coffee. Marky brought me coffee. I'm going to smell that bag before you leave. I just want you to <laughs> no, know I'm going to snicker coffee. No, we should smell it because I love the smell of coffee. Yeah. I love, I need to open it. Absolutely love coffee. Let's see. Oh, and it's even got one of these little things oh, nice. here. Isn't that handy? I hate mm -hmm. when they don't and you're like mm -hmm. trying, you're tearing yeah. apart the whole this... bag. It's like my daughter just goes like this with chips and then the whole bag. And I'm like, right. okay. She's like, why did that happen for the 40th Honey, time? <laughs> you're going to have to go get a great big bag now to put that in. All right, here, I'll just do this. <laughs> That's some good smelling coffee, Sam. Oh, man. <laughs> Come on. Should I, I bring it yeah, with me next water. time? Sorry. Oh, we, oh, we went down. Sorry. Ouch. Sorry, Angela. <laughs> Ouch. Sorry. <laughs> That's a classic me. <laughs> well, then they, they got to see the whole studio. Yeah. There's the studio. <laughs> we'll pretend that was intentional. <laughs> we did that on purpose. That was good, Sam. That looked totally fake. Yeah. Like you just. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, I really sold it. Oh, I was cracking up your Facebook post and it was like, may the 6th be with you, because oh, yeah. I already was to may the 4th be with you. And you can always count oh, on Sam to go hilarious. against the grain of everything. Yeah. It was hilarious. Oh, that's awesome. I'm the annoying guy that just lampoons everyone else's jokes. No, it's <laughs> awesome. I love it. I love making fun of things. So, you know, this is just all about talking about you and what you're doing. Thanks. It's super laid back and easy. All right, great. I don't, good. you know. That sounds good to me. I don't ask today. me, you know, like, questions. <laughs> but but I'm, I'm, I would be ready. I'm thinking you know me well enough yeah. that I wouldn't do. So you want this, that in front of my face? Okay. Yes. So, <laughs> basically, you don't need to have, like, your lips on it, but you just want to stay pretty close to okay. it. I tell people if it was a flashlight, pretend it was, like, pointing the light in your mouth. And that way you'll know <laughs> that you'll be... You'll be I'm good. at the dentist. Yeah, la, like la, la. telling ghost stories. Okay. <laughs> telling ghost stories. Okay. All right, cool. And then can you say something for me real quick? Hello. Oh, yeah, great. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. I am ready when you are. I'm ready to introduce Ms. Marky Culver. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here we go. All righty. Hi, this is Mish Hancock, and you are listening to Mishmash, a place where I get to talk to the weird, wacky, wonderful people of this world, people I adore and want to know more about. Today, my guest is Marky Culver. She is the founder, president, treasurer, and director of the Women's Bakery, a solution-providing agency that consciously works for people, not exploitively against them, but by building bakeries that create access to financial independence and social empowerment for women globally, mm -hmm. which is awesome. Thanks. So welcome, Marky. Thanks. I'm glad to be here. Thank I'm so glad me. you're here. I am so glad you're here. And I met you. It was a few. It was a I few think it was years ago, right? Almost two years ago, actually. Yeah. And I was so intrigued by everything Thanks. you were telling me and that you were doing. But the story I love that I so want to share with everybody yeah. is the avocados. Right. <laughs> You have to talk about how, the avocados. How, that's actually how everything started. So okay, yes, it I all began with an avocado. It did. It all began actually with avocados, tomatoes, and cabbage. So <laughs> that sounds weird because it's called the Women's Bakery, which would insinuate that we make bread, and in fact we do. Um, but 
I joined the Peace Corps um, and I was a volunteer in the Peace Corps from 2010 to 2012 with the co-founder and co-director. I'm actually the co-director of the Women's Bakery with my co-founder, Julie Green. Um, so she served at the same time in a different village, but just for that context. Um, so assigned to Rwanda, which fun fact, it was the only country I requested not to go to. And Peace Corps is like, cool. Are you serious? <laughs> well, they, they don't do that anymore. Oh, but, gosh. Um, yes. They're like, ah, let's challenge like, her. Cool, yeah. Let's see, let's so see if she Do you really want to be in the Peace Corps? Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, but I mean, very serendipitous. I'm, I'm obviously very glad that I was assigned there yeah. and that we're still there. So, um, I served in a very rural um, and small village in the northeastern part of the country, um, which is pretty pretty dry and pretty flat um, compared to the rest of the country, which is quite mountainous and lush and um, rather temperate. Because even though Rwanda is ex so Rwanda's in eastern Africa, it it borders well there it's it borders most like closely Congo. It's like just east okay. of the Congo. Um, and it's 75 miles south of the equator, so hot, but hot. it's the it's the elevation is quite high. So actually, in most parts of the country, it's rather temperate, except for the northeast where okay. I was serving. Oh, it was like great. stupid so hot. So not only are they sending right. you to Rwanda, but the place where you're just, right. you're going to be sweltering. Right, sweltering. <laughs> oh. So I had yeah, it was it was tough. But Good for you for finding the optimistic know, side of all. Of I know. This. Well, the the optimistic side to all of that was like despite the the intense heat and. And like, I mean, just everything was so dry. There was no water. Um, in exchange for that, I had wonderful people in my village and particularly my neighbors. So anyway, um, in most rural Rwandan villages, um, people typically eat one to one and a half meals a day. And the half meal would be if people have access to milk or porridge. And porridge is, is mostly... I think it's sorghum and millet that okay. if you have milk, you can mix it with milk. Right. Um, or most people actually mix it with water um, for breakfast. And so if you have access to that, then that counts as like a half meal because it's just milk. Right. Or like it would be millet. It would be some We're kind here, of cereal. It would just be a snack. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. And then the second and real meal or like bigger meal would be um, closer to our dinner. It'd be probably around 5 or 6 p.m. And it would be plantains or potatoes with tomatoes, sometimes beans, if you have them, beans typically are a cash crop, so people sell them for money. So ah. if they can keep them, they, they will and they'll cook them. Um, but yeah, so I, so, so in the United States, we have a lot of people have three meals a day. That's right. what I was accustomed Plus. to, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> for me, I have five. It's fine. Yeah. Um, so yeah, when I first, when I was first there for probably the first six months, maybe the better part of a year. I ate one meal a day. Well, I would say two. I would have, I would have make myself oatmeal in the morning. But okay. then I would, I was a teacher. I taught English as a foreign language. And so I'd be at school all day and then come home and eat dinner at like five or 6 PM. So the kids are at school all day and there's they not are. a lunch break. Correct. Interesting. And there's okay. really no lunch. That's not, that's just not, not a, a thing in mm -hmm. Rwanda. There's... I mean, not, not often. I mean, I think if people had access to it, then yes, it could be in right. the rural parts. They could find it. They could eat, but there's just it's not. It's would not they as just typical come as you here would think. and be? I mean, overwhelmed at the amount of food. Probably. I mean, because yes. you think. I mean, really, when you think Probably. about it, I mean, you go to a grocery mm -hmm. store. One of the things I'm struck with is uh, I remember one time somebody saying, and I can't remember what country they were from, but they that they were like what they have an entire so aisle options. just for dog right. food yes you know i mean that's how yeah. crazy it is yeah. and with us i mean there's just there's not just one of I it's know. here is the entire shelf right. or section of yeah which one do you want yeah i can't even imagine they'd come here and be like what the heck you guys have access to all this and can afford it yeah i think that that's probably an accurate reaction right. or anticipation of the reaction yeah i do um so, because I had the opposite reaction there, I was Where's like, "Wait, what? Food? Yeah, when a there's no what lunch? time of day? Yeah, are you, are you sure? Me? Are we sure that I can do that? I don't think I can do that. So I'd like go sneak off and like eat a Cliff Bar and be like, "Oh God, I'm starving." Really? So, so, did you have like people sending? Oh you? yeah, oh, definitely. Because I I, when I told my like, yeah, send me some protein. My bars. sweet parents were very diligent about sending me a package a month, and it was uh, once they figured out. 
or they found out that I really just didn't have a lot of food and especially access to protein. There oh, really wasn't a lot of protein. Yeah, exactly. They were just shipping like jars of peanut butter and like tuna and canned chicken and oh, stuff. My it was gosh. excellent. Um, but again, an anomaly. Most people obviously don't have right, that in right, Rwanda. Right, right. So I did that for six months, maybe the better part of a year. And, you know, out of solidarity, having one meal a day or one ish meal, meals a day to because the one of the points of the Peace Corps is to live and work as the people you're serving alongside. Sure, which do. would make sense. Right. And so that's that's what I strove to do until one day I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm super hungry, and I know you're super hungry, and I know your kids are super hungry, and there are avocados falling off trees, guys, and there's cabbage everywhere, and everybody's got tomatoes and onions. We have, like, an abundance of available food here. Like, let's figure something out. Right. And so I started to make salad um, as, as like, my midday meal. I would go home midday um, from school. And I would buy cabbage in our, like, either from my neighbor or we had, like, a really small pop-up market at night. And most of the time we did have cabbage, actually. And then I started to grow vegetables in my backyard, kale among them. So then I did have access to that. But tomatoes and onions, like, really, I mean, you can just find them All everywhere. The and then, honestly, like, avocados were seriously just, you would walk on and they'd just be, like, on the ground. Oh, my god! Right. And so I started making salad. And um, the way the village was set up. So the village is here, but my school was kind of up on top of a hill and people who did the Peace Corps with me are going to laugh when they hear that. Cause it was hardly a hill <laughs> comparatively <laughs> to other people's sites, but it was like up, up kind of on a hill. So to get to my house, I would have to walk through like down from the hill from school, walk through the village and kind of back around to my house. And as I walked through the village, um, most often, uh, women are in the fields tending to their fields and, and, often most men are sitting in town doing whatever they're just sitting outside playing games playing cards sometimes oh, they're drinking gotcha. sometimes they are in the fields helping um and maybe they're just like alternating taking a break i'm okay. trying to be generous here okay, okay so gotcha. yeah um <laughs> good job marky <laughs> so yeah so i would walk on i like walk through the middle of the street and the men would call me they'd be like what's up where are you going because you know, I'm walking home from school, but I'm supposed to be at school. I'm like, oh, no, we're, nothing. I'm not doing, I'm not doing anything. They're like, you're going home to eat, aren't you? And I was like, oh, no. No, 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 no. I'm definitely not doing that. Nope. I'm not, no eating here. I'm just not, going home. Not a clue what I you're forgot something about. in my house and I just, I'm going to get in and then I'm going to go back to school. And so I would, I would lie about it because it was kind of taboo. Right. Or at least I thought it was. Well, maybe it's really maybe not, it was but I thought like it was. People were going to start hanging out at your house. Well, but that's actually what time. happened because then I worked up the courage by like the third or fourth week. I would walk home and I would still get razzed and the men would be like, you're going to take food, aren't you? And I was like, yeah, I am. What? <laughs> because I know you're hungry and I'm hungry, so I'm going to go take food. Let's figure this what thing out. What are you going to do about it? And so the men were like, cool, we're coming. And so they follow me home. And like that is actually maybe that sounds like alarming here, right, but it's right. it's not. It was I gotcha. no, there was no malintent. It was just like, oh, if you're cooking, that means that I'm going to be eating what right, you're cooking, so, so I'm just coming in. Let's come to your place. So some men, um, and they were my friends too. So they would follow me home, and they were laughing because I'm like, yeah, you can definitely eat what I'm making. You're gonna not like it at all because they're really unless you live in a city in Rwanda, there really isn't salad is not a known commodity at all. And really there's no word for salad. If you're in a city, it's salad. Uh -huh. If you're in a rural place in Rwanda where that just doesn't exist, the, the idea of salad really just doesn't so exist. So you completely changed their perspective on food. Well, sort of, <laughs> because, oh. I mean, like it's called raw. And so when the men came in and I was like slicing up kale or, you know, like, cabbage Ew. and yeah, and <laughs> dicing tomatoes Seriously? and like putting them in and mixing it all up with avocado, they're like, well, where's the food? I'm like, oh, this is the food. And they're like, no, 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 no it's not cooked. No, no, Therefore, it's not food. That's stuff that falls off trees. Yeah. You don't eat it. They call it raw. There's no word. Oh, it's literally the direct translation is raw. And so the men were like, you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> we're leaving uh, because this is disgusting. We're not Americans. sure what's happening here. Ew, yeah. they're and, so weird. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so they went home and they told their wives, they were like, can you believe how crazy Marky is? She's eating raw. Like, what a weirdo. And the wives were like, oh, that is crazy. <laughs> and then they'd disgusting. come over to me later and be like, can you please teach us how to do that? And so that's what happened. And so then oh I did, gosh. I had women start coming um, to learn how to make salad. And now did you mix it? Like was, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to guess 
oil and vinegar wasn't no, just hanging out it next wasn't. to you. Vinegar actually was pretty accessible. White vinegar, and it may not, I'm not sure how you make it, but you could find it and buy it in the village. Okay. It like big jars. Um, olive oil, yes, in the cities, but super expensive. So right. I did have it, but I didn't use olive oil. I used avocados. I would smush up avocados and mix that with oh, the vinegar. Okay. So that became like an avocado vinaigrette. Oh, cool. Yeah, and a little bit of salt and some pepper, which, again, was also available. Pepper, maybe not quite as much, but salt, definitely. And then just mix in your cabbage or, like, whatever vegetable you have. So... I think the women came for two reasons. One was because they were curious, mm -hmm. and then two, because I also worked at a health center. So I was a teacher, but then I also worked as a, at a health center that was okay. nearby. And what I was doing at that health center was helping in the nutrition ward. Um, so women were accustomed to seeing me in the nutrition ward. Some of them, not all gotcha. of them. Gotcha. Some of them. And what I was doing there was teaching about nutrition. and So doing... this all lended validity yes. to what you were doing. Right. And so... There, maybe that w helped to establish a level of trust or rapport where they were, they were willing to try something new. Right. And then, and then also knowing that I would use it as a platform to teach them right. something about what they're eating, which, you know, and I was teaching myself. I was trying to find books on nutrition, and I was, like, calling one of my best friends from high school who is a registered dietitian to be like, ah, uh, is cabbage good for you? I'm not really sure I think it is, but, like, can you tell me about it? So... Yeah, I used it as a platform to not only teach women about nutrition, but also give them another um, item for them to feed their kids. Sure. And so I started holding salad making lessons in my house. And it was really just like, because I, I would come home every single day to right. eat lunch. And so if the women wanted to show up for salad making lessons, they could. Um, and then, and did they like it? I mean, they did. It was, it was very comical to watch, like whenever we had a new lady come in and uh -huh. try the salad for the first time, because you know, her, she's being invited by her friends and her friends are like, no, you got to try it. It's weird, but you got to try it. And she's like, oh, and so she tries it and she'll, most times they'll like faint that they think it's gross. They'll be like, <laughs> and then they'll look at you and be like, it's delicious. <laughs> You're like, really? What was that face? Why, Why did you make that face? Because I can <laughs> like, you know, you think of other cultures. Mm -hmm. I mean, so I'm thinking of like China. Yeah. Where there's like the kebabs where people are gnawing on the yeah. scorpions, you know? I, know. I really don't think yeah. if I tried it, the first that I could get past the fact that I don't think I should eat this right. really Is yucky looking thing. Right. And um, that stings people and, you know, right. And, but I, I just don't see me taking this on as my new snack. I, I, and I think the women would probably agree with you, but it's been funny too. And, and my team, my women's bakery team can attest to this because anytime somebody does try a new customer, tries our bread, it's the same reaction where they will like their face will be like, oh, disgusting. And then when they open up their eyes, they're like, it's delicious. And you're like, I'm so confused by what is happening. So it was the same maybe with the women. That face uh, maybe, the that was, maybe that's a good totally thing. Yummy. Yeah, apparently. Can't get enough of it. Apparently. It's just so bizarre. So yeah, the, that's what I did. And I, I was making salads and teaching women to do the same because they had everything. Like they had all the same vegetables and if they wanted kale they could either grow it or they could just right. come to my yard because I had tons so it was nice it was like a nice midday thing that I was doing and it, it helped me it I liked it because it was a, another way for me to engage in the community and also get to know the women more and, and listen to them more and like what right. what were they talking about what were they thinking about what are they concerned about etc and obviously the concern was their kids. Right. And exactly. the health. And, Making sure the kids right. are eating and, and being healthy. Right. And exactly. That is, so, I mean, I will tell you, I think that's just amazing that you could go over there and totally change people's perspectives on eating. Well, but it was also them. I appreciate that. Thanks. But it can't all be just me. It's got to be them too, right? Like they, they they had the curiosity and then also the willingness to try exactly. and then replicate. And to trust you and go, oh, yeah, and trust okay, themselves to be like, okay, I'm, I'm going to try this also. Right. So yeah. Very cool. And then, and then bread. So, bread. The, so now we get to bread. Right. The okay. bread happened because, and this is hilarious because it's very honest. The bread happened because one day. I woke up and was like, oh, I've been gluten-free for far too long, and that is completely unacceptable, and I need bread in my mouth right now. And so <laughs> I looked up a recipe. The Peace Corps gives you, like, a little cookbook um, when you are sent off to your site, 
and I looked up a recipe for yeast bread, and it was simple. It was five ingredients. It's flour, water, yeast, salt, and sugar. And I had all of those, or at least access to all of them. I had to go to the town that was like a motorcycle ride away, about 20 minutes, to find the flour. But everything else I could find in the village, even the yeast, which is surprising. Wow, yeah, yeah because that's the one ingredient I was thinking, really? Yeah, so, okay. you could. Um, and, and there are reasons for that. So so I, I did it. I went to the, the city that was nearby town and bought some flour, came back. And the Peace Corps, when we were in training, taught us how to make basically a Dutch oven. So... They, we, we learn how to cook over an open fire and the Dutch oven is using two pots and like four stones. So you have a big pot that you put over the open fire and then you put like three or four stones at the base inside that pot. Right. And then when you are making your dough, you put it on the, in another pot that's oiled obviously, and you place it on those stones and then you cover both. And it's done that's when you smell it. Yeah. So I tried it. Which is so true. I'm telling you, that's even at my house. Like, I'm yeah. not a very big baker, cooker. No, not, I don't <laughs> do that. But every once in a while, yeah. you know, like my daughter and yeah. her friend have a thing about if they're spending the night at each other's house, they have to make something, oh. which honestly turns out great because yeah. they're usually making dessert. So I'm oh, happy. Like sweet. I'll eat but that. But I'll say to them, I'll say, like, I can smell those brownies. They're, they're done. Yep. Exactly. As soon as you smell it. Yeah, it is. Be, I mean, you. Yeah. I guess you could time it. There's probably a science to it. Food chemist would cringe hearing me say this, but <laughs> right. it's fine. So, what did she do? What did she just say? <laughs> What's that bread taste Ooh. like? Now? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I just made a loaf of bread one day and uh, with my salad because I thought, yeah, this bread is going to be great. Right. Good. Yeah. And so the women came in for their salad making lesson and they saw the bread. It was cooling on my table. And bread is a known commodity even in rural Rwanda, it's just a scarce commodity. Got it's really it. only found in like towns and cities. Right. Um, and so even though the shape was different, they could smell it. And also I think that they knew it was bread. And so right. they said, where did you buy that? And I said, oh, no, no, no. I didn't buy it. I made it. I made this. And they were incredulous. So they started smacking me, which is like actually a good thing in Rwanda. It's very bizarre because it's not lights. <laughs> They're like smacking you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go to Rwanda I'm yeah. just gonna do like if I start smiling they're probably be like oh she's so mad at us yeah. right now. <laughs> no, no 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 I don't think so but like if they hit you the harder they hit you the more that they like you it's you, bizarre that's a good thing yeah okay so gotcha. and they're they were small so they're just like smacking my chest and you're like oh <laughs> okay, okay cool yeah. I, I think you, you like you love it. me you yeah, love exactly. me okay so um they asked if I would teach them how to make the bread and I said oh, of course yeah I'm happy to if you come back tomorrow like I'll teach you how to make the bread and they did. So I had about four women, I think, come that day for the salad making lesson. And I had seven or eight show up the next day for the bread making lesson. And I didn't know what I was doing. I'd only made bread, bread once in my life, and it was yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, cool, I'll teach you. I think I know what I'm doing. Because I think doing. i got to try right, this I've again. I've got the cookbook right here, and here are the directions. <laughs> so I'll just try. And so I did. And we only made one loaf of bread because I hadn't caught on to anything and how to do this and i don't know if you've ever made yeast bread but it's like a five hour endeavor well i mean a, a very long time ago i think i might yeah. have tried it once and it was you know and then i'm like poking at it going yeah it's done i think yeah. i'm supposed to do something with right. it now but it's not easy no it's well no it's not it's it's not that it's difficult it's just labor intensive and so <laughs> it well, was five don't hours you to, like need yeah. it need it need yeah you it do forever and, so you yeah. you need it for about you know, 10 minutes the first time and then you let it rise for an hour and then you knead it again for eight to 10 minutes and then let it rise for an hour and then you heat up your oven and then you cook it. Anyway, it took a long time and I had a seven or eight women, as I said, and they came probably around like one or 2 PM. And, you know, by the time we'd finally gotten the dough into our Dutch oven, we had, you know, seven women standing or sitting around this oven who had been there for hours because it takes so long. Right. And by this point it's dusk, which is dinner time. Right. right. And so the mothers are the ones who cook dinner, but they're sitting around my one oven fire with one, with bread. one <laughs> loaf of bread baking, <laughs> waiting for this loaf of bread to bake because now they're committed. They've just spent four hours making I'm this not thing. Leaving I want to taste exactly. it. Exactly. Right. And so then the babies start to come out of the woodworks, right? Because they're looking for their moms. They're hungry. Right. So for every one woman you have, you have literally between like two or four kids. So we had probably. 30 kids oh and seven gosh. women literally standing around this one oven waiting for this one loaf of bread to finish baking and when it did i took like, it out and i'm passing out one inch well, cubic piece right exactly and it wasn't it wasn't big it was small because like it was the it wasn't big 
But so when it was finished, I was like passing out pieces to the women to because like giving them sizable chunks for them to try. Right. And so as soon as they did try it and realized that it was good, it immediately went into the mouths of the children. And I was like, aha. Oh my gosh. Right. This is how we do it. This yeah. is how we feed the babies. Exactly. Like, we just need to pump this bread full of nutrients. Right. And it's going to be a snack, but a highly nutritious snack for these kids. And, I love and it. And the conduit is the mothers. Like you're, if I'm teaching them how to make this bread, like it's just a, it's a, a way, it's a way to empower them to feed their kids. Basically. It was as simple as that. And so that was my first light bulb moment where I thought, okay, this can I can do this. Like yeah, I'm gonna got, replace the salad making here. lessons, yeah, right. with baking lessons. And I'm I'm just gonna figure out how to augment these recipes or that one recipe that I had. And I can look up other recipes because the internet is a beautiful thing. Right. 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 And yeah. then figure out how to fortify it. We had peanuts were cash crop in our village. And so they already pulverized it into flour. So I was like, Well, boom, there, there go. we go. Let's see There's what it's gonna taste like if yeah. we put peanuts in there. And there really isn't a peanut allergy, so like yeah, not like here. That's not true. Not like here. So right? I was just fortifying this bread mostly with peanut flour, um, but then any other. And so I dabbled in peanut flour with the yeast bread, but then I started making quick breads like our banana bread, but making it with like squash or beets or carrots. And it was just a way for me to try and pack this bread full of nutrients to teach the women how to do it so that they could just make it at home. That was the goal. And that right. was really it. So I had, I held baking lessons probably biweekly. Um, and they were quite popular. I had a lot of women come. I bet. Yeah. And then after about two months of baking, I had, I had consistently, I had probably eight women who came consistently twice a week and one woman in particular who was, never missed it and, and was with me every single day. One of my neighbors, her name is Claudine. She is incredible. So one day, uh, about two months after she had learned how to bake, like she'd been baking for about two months, she, and I think it was another woman and I can't remember which one it was. I think it might have been Mama Beyonce, which is hilarious. Her daughter's name is Beyonce. And All her right. son's name is Michael Jackson. It's fine. Oh, okay. So I think it was her. They came to me and they were like, guess what? And I was like, what? And they're like, we totally just sold our bread at the market. And I was like, you what? And they're like, yeah, we just sold the bread. And it was the forti- it's like our right. peanut flour fortified bread. And I said, you did? And they're like, yeah. I was like, do you realize what you just did? You guys are brilliant because what you have just done is discovered that there is demand for, for this, this bread, bread, but no supply. Exactly. And so that was the second light bulb moment for me where I was like, aha, we can create the local supply for this bread. And then my mind started exploding because we were like, okay, well then it can be gainful employment for these women. And if it's fortified with protein, it can be like, as I Locally. said, a combatant for right. malnutrition that is like sustainable because the women themselves are the ones running it. Exactly. And then also like you could generate this micro economy because you're sourcing everything from that community. And then it would be different than typical projects that you see often in the developing world where something is made in Rwanda, for example, but then sold then in the sold United States. Else. Right. So it's right. all like so right it's there. contained. And to use the word of my co founder, Julie, it's contained. It's a self contained program that is not only sustainable but like replicable and, right. and self-generating and you've got and then you've got that in rwanda and tanzania and, tanzania, and you, there's you're thinking about expanding to another area into kenya yeah that's um, fabulous yeah so that that's how it started and then really what is now the women's bakery that was the precursor that was the seed of the what is now the women's bakery what is now the Women's Bakery has been a product of tons of people and just like incredible brain power and drive. And primary among that is the co-founder, Julie Green. As I said, she did the Peace Corps. We were in the right. same cohort. Probably the best Peace Corps volunteer that ever lived. Oh, awesome. I mean, really. <laughs> and um, yeah, so we, I, she was, um, when I built the first bakery, I did it with my brother um, after I finished the Peace Corps. But she was, like I told her about it, she was alongside me and giving me ideas and helping me with things. And so when I came back to the U.S. and um, wanted to keep going and to expand and to create a real business, I mean, she was right there. And she's not only one of the smartest people I know, but definitely one of the most capable and like hardcore most driven um, with like a steely, unshakable compassion. Aww. So she... Yeah, she jumped on board and just has spearheaded so much. She lives and works full-time in Rwanda, running the programs over there. I mean, she's definitely, like, 
wow. you know, the captain of the ship. So, yeah, she has been incredible. And we started the Women's Bakery in 2015 with another um, a gal in St. Louis named Natalie Hornsby, who um, was a partner in the ideation of the model, but then also like a strong contributor. And then um, two more members, Meg North and Heather Newell, who have helped us grow into what we are now, which is like a going Jesse. It's we're barely three years old. Yeah, we it's, have, a, it's amazing to see the growth. And yeah, then, and it's the womensbakery.com, dot com, right? That's, it is. That's yes. the site, so yep. people can learn more. And about we have it. five bakeries, and we are expanding and we're growing. We have eight full time employees. I mean, this team is incredible. The team seriously is incredible. It's awesome what you've built. Thanks. It totally is. And I'm telling we're going to take a break. Yeah. We've been chatting it up like crazy. I'm sorry. Usually I do a break, but it, I didn't want to stop because it was so amazing to me. So we, we, we're going to take a break now, okay. but we'll be right back with Marky Culver. Oh, sorry. I didn't realize you needed a break. Sorry, no, no, gosh. No, no, no. It would, I would have told you. But we don't, we can, can we go straight to the third section then? Let's just do that. Don't you think so? No, no. It was, how long have we been chatting? I I didn't keep track. Uh, it was 27 minutes. What? Damn. I know. Yo, sorry. What time is it? Because I know I don't want to run over on you guys. It's 4.46, so you, oh, you want to do another 10-minute thing? Okay. Yeah. Like yeah. And I'll try and talk less. No, I... <laughs> no, because... Well, you can ask Sam, because this has happened before, where certain people, I'm like, no, we're just going to keep going. Okay. Just keep going, because this is... It's, like, so... And, I, you, and you were so perfect. You told exactly from, here's how it all started, yeah. and here's where it went. And it is fascinating. Thanks. Yeah. It is totally fascinating. It is and you cool. have such passion for it. I do. Which I love. Yes. Right? And I'm so excited that I get to be focused on it now and singularly focused because my focus has been divided with being school. in grad school. Yeah. Right. Oh my gosh. I totally want to come to Rwanda with you, though. Do you promise? I would love to. We, so we are starting to invite people um, for, like, I guess it would be donor trips or just, we're trying to find a nice name for it, but to have there be some exposure to right. not only the programs, but then some kind of reciprocity between the women that we're training and also like people who are coming to see their work. Yeah. So we're, we're trying to figure it out because I think oftentimes it will, it would have, it would be most beneficial to you. It'll be well, like life changing to you. Yeah. But so we're trying to figure out how it can be like equally but as then, beneficial yeah, how to do the you ladies, make it like, right? So it's almost like, what will you bring to the table for these people? Mm -hmm. you or, know they, I mean? or they to you. And so one of the things that we're thinking is that they'll train you how to bake bread. Oh. Right? So then you're, it's just a, a you different. You learn how to bake bread and you teach from them the ladies. something. No, like yeah. they will teach you how to bake right, bread. Right, right, right. That's to what I'm saying. Yeah. So that, oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. I want to go. Okay. <laughs> Put me on your, hold on, I'm at low battery mode. <laughs> That's how much battery I'm using. Wait, should I? I'm going to plug it in. It's whenever you do these live things. So I try to just like, oh, here I am with my oh, portable cool. battery charger. That's awesome. <laughs> I know you have to. Hi, everybody. I'm already like out of battery. Well, this is a Mophie, and I love this thing. Huh. I love this thing. It's very, it's really good. This thing actually. Does it, and you can juice up your this is, does like four times oh, wow. on my okay. I'm ready, I'm ready. We did our break, and I have questions. Okay, ready. We are back with Marky Culver. Okay, I have questions now. Okay, ready. <laughs> this is just to shake everything up. Okay, so what do you think people in general like it just in general would we? I mean. Okay, you already talked about they hit you when they're happy and they right. like you a lot. But what else do you think that we might find surprising about East Africa? Hmm. So I guess I'll speak for Rwanda specifically because that's the country I know best in East Africa. Um, I think one of the things you would find surprising is the terrain, the topography of Rwanda. Mm -hmm. Because what do you envision when you think of Well, you East know, you Africa? think desert, right? right? Exactly. You think the, you just think dry desert. Right. That's exactly what you think. Right. So Rwanda is literally the opposite. It is. So the the motto or the name of Rwanda is the land of a thousand hills. And so it's a, a, an extraordinarily hilly or mountainous country uh -huh. that is incredibly lush. Oh, just wow. like green as far as the eye can see. Um, and very hilly. It's beautiful. And not hilly like Missouri. Uh, I don't know that we have. I don't know what would be most similar. <laughs> here but yeah it's gorgeous so oh. i think that would be surprising um and then what else 
Well, the raw food is interesting because do, yeah. do they consider it has to be cooked in order to be a meal? It depends on where you are. If you're, yes, it is the short answer if you're mm-hmm. in a rural part. Um, often yeah. the word food is synonymous with cooked. Okay. So if you eat something raw, it's not necessarily considered food to some or most in a rural place. In a city or in a town, no, they totally know. Got yeah. Salad. And a little I think, bit different, yeah. And I think that's starting to, I think that that knowledge is starting to, um, because people are traveling more and right. there's more access to things, um, the world's more exposure, smaller. right? So yeah. I do think that more people are starting to learn what salad is or what raw food. And people eat bananas and avocados, and that's technically raw. Right. But yeah. They do eat gotcha. it. Gotcha. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I have some kind of along the same lines. Yeah. Um, so is, is there a favorite African word or saying that you have? Sure. So the language in Rwanda, um, actually, they're one of the only African countries that I know of that has a singular unifying language, and it's called Kenya Rwanda. It sounds like Kenya, but it's K-I-N. Okay. Kenya, Rwanda. And it means literally of in Rwanda. And my favorite saying there is probably, yay bob away, which is just saying like, oh my gosh. Yay bob away. Yay bob away. <laughs> <laughs> and I love it because it, the, it depends on like the, the tonation and like how you deliver it, what you mean. Because if you're really excited, ah. it's like, yay bob away. Like, and if yay. you're like scared or you're disappointed, you're like, yay bob away. Oh, that's it's just awesome. a lot of yeah. It's really it cool. has many uses. So mm-hmm. if I go there, that could be my thing. If you yes, if you went out <laughs> and you shook somebody's hand and you were like, "Yeah, Bob, away!" They're like, "Yes, she totally that's likes hilarious. me." I don't know how and you know that. And then she'll start slapping me. Right, exactly. <laughs> that's exactly. awesome. Yeah. Okay, so I was perusing your mm-hmm. website and I came across this wonderful picture of you with the head wrap. Oh, right. <laughs> now, did someone do that, or yes. do you know how to do? I it? don't. I have tried you know, to learn. Look at me. I'm kind of jealous. Yeah. Right? I Actually, totally need to learn how to do the do. head wrap thing. Like, if I go with you, would they teach me how to bake yes. bread, but also how to do a head Definitely. wrap? Definitely. And I can tell you, I know, I know at least like the the motion i don't know if mine would look as beautiful <laughs> as as the way most well, over I've there seen do people do it they're like whoop, oh whoop, yeah whoop, 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 and you're, oh, now it looks fabulous i'm thinking oh i would be a hot mess my right. I, mine would look like what no why, actually why does she have that up? i think what you'd be doing? surprised i think it's easier than you think and it is beautiful so the trick that i've seen is that so you bring it back and then you do like a, a turn and then you come back up and bow it right here you oh. do like a knot right here so and also, the fabric is quite thick. The fabric that yeah, we use over there, right. so that helps. I probably a need lot like a little bit more fabric to the right. yeah. Interesting. Yeah, but it is lovely. I do. I when I when I do that because we ask the ladies to do that when they're baking, and it's to Keep, it's a hairnet, right. but sure. it's something that they already have. Because right. Hairnets, if they are in Rwanda, I'm sure they're expensive, and so we just ask them to use fabric. Um, and yeah, I think it's it's beautiful and it's a very effective way to do it yeah i love it yeah well i have to say this has been way fun oh, thank it is you at first just i mean you're you're so humble about what you do but i totally honor you for what Thanks. you have done and what all your team has done and it, it's it just you know for with all the crap going on yeah. around us right now it's just to me these are the kind of stories i want everybody to pay attention to because there are people out there making wonderful things happen in the world too. Yeah. So let's not forget that. Thanks, Mish. You know. Yeah. Thank you, Marky. Yeah, and congratulations on your what tell me tell us your your you're, you're yeah, done with school. I'm finished. So where what do you have degrees an in? MBA. <gasps> Next week I'll actually get it. Yeah. Oh, yay for So MBA. now I know how to do business. <laughs> ah, and isn't that a thing to know when you start something out at one point right. you're like, oh gosh, now I gotta learn yeah, how to run this thing. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I've been oh, there. Gosh, yes. Yep. <laughs> well awesome. Congratulations. Thanks. And thank you so much for being a guest. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. This has been great. Yay, thanks. I really appreciate it. And for all of you out there, thanks for listening to Mishmash. Go to iTunes, subscribe, because we always have amazing people like Marky Culver on. Love you all. Bye. <laughs> thanks, Mish. Thank you. That, that was, was so awesome. fun. Yeah, that was great. Well, I don't, you know I've been wanting to have you on forever. And I know. Sorry it's taken. And I, I think, too, you asked at one point when I was in Rwanda. So sorry about yeah. that. Yeah. No, no. Well, yeah. Really, you should please next yeah. time. Can you talk with me before you do your scheduling? <laughs> but yeah. I was well, I was looking at it and I was I don't I was thinking I should do something like this sometime. Have that experience. Yeah, you should. And and just I mean it's just amazing to me, you know, especially and I think that 
coming back from TED Fest and realizing just how small the world really mm-hmm. is. Yeah. Because we had, like, people from 60 different countries at That TED is Fest. insane, really? Oh, 60 different countries. And, and, you know, these were people, and Chris Anderson actually said this. He said, people that are coming together not from a place of past disagreements but, with, but for future possibilities. Right. Which that, again, just touched my heart. And reminded me, this is why I'm so involved and passionate about what we do. Because these are people that want to take the world awesome. forward and evolve yeah. it rather than devolve yeah. it. Which I think so many forces are trying to take us the other direction. I'm like, no. Yeah. I'm going to resist you wanting right. to devolve me. Right. I'm exactly. Evolving whether you like it or yes. not. You know? yeah. And so, Good. I'm with you. Yeah, exactly. I'm with you. So it's really important to me that that is brought forward to yeah. people in any way I can get it out there. Thanks. So. I appreciate it. Because we actually, and it's not necessarily just because... Like, in light of the recent election, this is a dream Julie and I have had since we started, is making the model applicable in the United States, because we know it can be. Well, and it, and it could, and it, it's and it necessary is. here, too. So, and it, yeah, and so we, um, we have, we've piloted programs, and it's spearheaded by one of our team members, Heather, who's in Denver. She's done an excellent job, and so, yeah, we are, we are expanding, and it, we, and the next place... Other than Kenya, if we mm-hmm. go to Kenya, the next expansion is here. It's now. It's like St. Louis and Denver. We're going to start with Denver, but I, I would like to have it be in St. Louis, too. It's am- And, you know, so because Teresa Carrington with the Blessing yes. Basket Project, right? Yep. So she, she said the same thing. She's like, I'm in all these other places doing this, yeah. but I am, I'm also going to bring this to the United States because it's needed here mm-hmm. as well. Absolutely. You know, so it's, it's so cool that you kind of get to pilot it somewhere refine it figure exactly. it out go get an mba in the meantime right. to go. it's <laughs> super easy really it was just, just such a breeze kind of yeah. boom I just slept you know. every night <laughs> <laughs> and it was no Didn't problem. have to study no, very much. Never. It just like all innate yeah. to you. It oh just... yeah, definitely. I slept on my books and I just got it. <laughs> it just go into my head. Right. Well, that's what's coming, right? Some of us have like a little thing we just stick in our head. And we're like, no, I got now I know how to do all my how spreadsheets. Much is the right. MBA program? I need the MBA chip. <laughs> oh my God, that's crazy. That'd be oh, thank you, dear. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Bye, everybody. Bye. We'll finish.